Hey everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Wednesday, November 27, 2013, and this is an update on the Tricor Transformer experiment that I've been working on. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I produced the video, and there has been quite a bit of progress that I've made since, uh, since my last video. I've decided that I would not go with a solid metal core for the transformer simply because of the hysteresis that was pointed out to me would be present in the in the core. The hysteresis of a solid core, by the way, is what makes the PMH work the way it does. When you energize the coils and, and have a metal bar across it, the hysteresis in the metal is what causes it to continue to hold until you actually pull it apart. Um, I don't think that's what I'm looking for, and that was the reason why I went with uh, the stranded wire that I that I wrapped in my original transformer. But the problem with this arrangement is that once the cores are wound and once you've once you've threaded the steel wire through the cores, you have no way of changing the the orientation of your coils or uh, you know. Uh, ex really experimenting. So this, while this was a good first effort, it did not make a very good test fixture for multiple coil arrangements and for changing things around. So I didn't want to be locked into having a fixed arrangement, which is why I thought about doing one of these using the spools that Fire Pinto made for me. Thank you fi again for that, Fire Pinto. Uh, these would have fit directly on top of the three-quarter inch threaded, uh, all thread, that I was going to use as my cores, but again, a little, little clumsy to put together, and I decided that I still wanted a, uh, a laminated type of core, but uh, that, again, is also a little difficult, so I decided to, to do the uh, Bedini trick, and uh, I spent two or three days taking metal coat hangers, straightening them out, uh, and cutting them to length, shaving them off to a flat surface, so they're all roughly about the same length. And you'll notice I've got five washers stacked on here. I uh, picked up a three-quarter inch step drill bit to complete the drilling process of these five-eighths inch washers. They're really not five-eighths, they're almost three-quarters of an inch. A three-quarter inch washer is actually too big, and I needed it to be exactly the same same inner diameter as the as the bobbins. So what I did was I got the step bit, made myself a little wooden test fixture to hold it in the drill press, and drilled out these five washers to exactly three quarters of an inch. And now with these washers, I'm I'm using them to hold this bundle of straight metal rods that were coat hangers together so that I can epoxy them together into one solid core. Once they are epoxied together, then I'm going to cut it into three sections and assemble it so that I end up with my triangular core and I can take the, the bobbins on and off and do some real experimenting. Uh, the epoxy that I'm using is some epoxy that I bought some time ago that I was going to use and may even still use to create the powdered ferrite cores for the uh, second generation Mueller motor experiment that I was putting together. But when I went and retrieved it last night, uh, it had been in freezing conditions for so long that the, uh, and, and so aged that the resin had crystallized inside and was just a solid block. Uh, Outsider 007 in my nerd herd said, hey, you can bring that, you might be able to bring that back to life by just heating it. So I took a coffee can, put a little water in it, so that when I put the bottle of resin in it, the water level rose up to almost the edge, set it on top of the rocket stove over, uh, for a couple of hours that night, got it warmed up real nice, and started to see a little bit of progress where I saw, saw some of the uh, crystallized resin starting to go back into a liquid form. So I ended up taking this can, bringing it up to the house, leaving it on the uh, on the propane stove that we have in our great room overnight and all day today. Overnight, uh, when I looked at it this morning, quite a bit more had liquefied, but there was still like a gelatinous core in the middle. And I thought, well, hmm, okay, I'll stop at 
uh, I'll stop at an auto parts store or Home Depot and pick up some some resin. I actually ended up picking up some Bondo fiberglass resin and hardener just in case I wasn't able to resurrect this but when I came home this afternoon the entire bottle was liquefied so it looks like I have resurrected this bottle of resin that I can now use to mix in my Dixie cups to put my core together. So that's it for the update. Uh, in my next video I'm going to uh, actually just uh, show you how I go about making a mess essentially and epoxying the, uh, the, the rods together as one solid core and then if I have to I may end up uh, haven't really decided yet haven't really decided I need to keep them in an exactly in a, in a perfectly round pattern so I will probably end up leaving the washers in place as the epoxy cures and then once the epoxy is cured take my uh, my cutoff wheel and literally just cut the washers right off of the off of the core so that I can then take the core and slice it up into three pieces that's it for now zero fossil fuel thank you for watching if uh, you have not subscribed to my channel I hope you will please rate share and comment on my videos as well and as always peace everyone I think I did that in one take. Not bad.